Aloha, BYU Hawaii. My name is Jordan Collins, and we're going to be taking a look at Japanese pop music. So, um, as you can see in the background, these are just some popular Japanese singers and bands. To the top left, we have a Yumi Hamasaki, who is extremely popular, who we will learn about later. Um, to the top right, we have Morning Musume. And to the bottom left, we have BZs. And to the bottom right, we have Speed. Now, these are just some examples of Japanese pop music. Um, I would just like to start off adding that um, I live in Okinawa, Japan right now. I have lived here for about five years. And I have a lot of firsthand experience with um, the Japanese culture and especially J-pop. So let's just get started going to the next slide. So. What is J-pop? You can see the first bullet. I have J-pop written in katakana. Katakana is basically just like our alphabet. The Japanese have the same thing. So that is J-pop and katakana. I just thought it was interesting to share maybe the Japanese writing a little bit. So J-pop is an abbreviation for Japanese pop music. It was started in the 1990s and was called J-pop by the Japanese media to separate it from other foreign music. And you can see later on that throughout the different courses and time periods of Japanese music, they tend to give their music a type of name. So you'll see that later on. So J-pop is a type of electronic dance music originated by Europe. So you'll, throughout the examples, you will see that it's very upbeat, it's very, um, I don't know, like it says, it makes you want to dance. <laughs> okay, so nowadays, almost all popular Japanese music is called J-pop. So we have our top 100 songs, anything that has to do with the top music in Japan would be considered J-pop. Let's move on to the next slide. Alright, we have the history of Japanese music from 1920 to 1950. Taisho period is the start of the Ryukoka, or popular Japanese music, started. Western jazz and blues influenced Ryukoka. They started using violins, guitars, and harmonicas in their different music because of this influence. Ryochi Hattori was a Japanese or used Japanese native music with a touch of blues. And he was just the composer. For example, we have Noriko Aweya singing Wakare no Blues. And Noriko Aweya actually became known as the Queen of Blues. So that is what our example is, and we'll just watch that after I finish this slide. Okay, jazz was put on halt in Japan because of pressure from the Imperial Army. Okay, and American soldiers introduced boogie woogie, mambo, and blues, and country music to Japan. So now we're seeing from the 1920s to 1950s that it took from traditional Japanese music was added bla or jazz and blues and different types of um, instruments. And we have country music, we have mambo, we have boogie woogie, <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> and so we can see that the Japanese music is starting to change. So we're going to take a look at this video. And this is the only way I know how to play this video is from here. We're only going to watch about a minute of it. So.
So with that video, you can kind of get a feel of um, the Japanese blues. It's, I would consider very different. I mean, that might just be one example. Um, but you can see the bass guitar used in it, and that is a very good example of the Japanese blues. So let's continue on. So Japanese history, or history of Japanese music in the 1960s. All right. In 1956, the rock and roll craze began in Japan. The Japanese translated American songs and performed them in Japanese, which were also known as cover pops. So this created a huge dilemma in Japan because they weren't sure if they should translate the songs and sing them in Japanese or just sing them in their American, um, their English like they are originated. So in the end, it came about that they decided that they should sing it in American or English. <laughs> okay, so Ku, Ku Sakamoto and his famous song, Suki Yaki, released in the U.S. Um, in 1963, which was the first Japanese song to hit number one position in the United States. So we can see Su, Su Ku. Sakamoto um, to the right in his picture. Um, I find this very interesting personally because knowing how different Japanese music is and knowing how different American music is, um, it's interesting to find that it would become an American, or an American number one hit. So, let's move. <coughs> um, the history of Japanese music in <coughs> the 1960s continued. Okay. <clears throat> So, excuse me, the Ventures American band traveled to Japan in 1962, causing the electric car to boom, guitar to boom. Um, also, in 1966, the Beatles visited Japan, and the Japanese government was not happy about this. They thought that they would cause juvenile delinquency. <clears throat> But the, the funny thing is, the Beatles craze has never ended. The Japanese are crazy about the Beatles. And so ever since they came here, it has been non-stop Beatles, even until today. Okay, history of Japanese music, 1970s to 80s. So we're getting up to where J-pop began. Um, <clears throat> songs started focusing on personal issues. They started to get angry. So we have the happy Japanese music transforming into maybe more angry emotional music. <coughs> Excuse me. Rock was still extremely popular as well as electronic rock. So just because they were starting to get emotional or anything, they didn't they still had their crazy rock. So in the eighth in the eighties, car stereos took off in Japan. Um, which started City Pop music with big city theme and to the right we have a picture of Tokyo um, I have personally been there this summer and that is about a sixth of the city <laughs> it is ginormous um, they started to disappear toward the late 18 or 1980s so city pop didn't last very long all right we are now down to the growth of j-pop music in the 1990s now um, in 1986, a band named the Alfie um, were the first to play a concert of 100,000 people in Japan. In 1988, we see on the right or left a group called Bowie, were the first artists to have three number one hits in a year. <clears throat> in 1992, Dream Come True's album, The Swinging Star, was the first to sell over three million copies. In 1996, Cage and Asuka were the first Asian group to take part in MTV Unplugged. And so, <clears throat> today, Jap Japan is the second biggest music recording maker in the world. I find this awesome. I think, I think this is extremely cool because going from 1986 to where they performed only 
for the first time in front of 100,000 people to being the second biggest producers of music in the world is just amazing. <clears throat> so we are talking about typical J-pop instruments. So we have electronophones, many of them, <laughs> considering, considering it is a uh, dance electronic beat, we have many electronic instruments. So on the bottom right, we see the electric guitar. Um, we have the synthesized synthesizer to the top right and the synthesizer just it's like a keyboard with all these switches like you can see and it creates any type of sound so also we have a drum machine to the bottom left and then to the top left we have a bass guitar so these are just some typical j-pop um, instruments also whenever I looked up it was considered vocals too so we have the singing as well so today, in the in the <laughs> Japan, we can see the top five J-pop artists. First, we have the BZs, which are on the bottom right. We have Mr. Children, who are on the top right. Ayumi Hamasaki, on the top left. Southern All Stars, with the red background in the middle. And Dreams Come True. These were all extremely, they're still extremely, they're the top J-pop artists. So we're going to talk a little about Ayumi Hamasaki. She has changed uh, the Japanese history in so many, or mu of music in so many ways. So we can see her name written in kanji first, and then katakana. Um, so she is a model. She's a songwriter. She's a producer. She's an actress. She's a singer, and she's a lyricist. Um, she went to Tokyo to pursue an entertainment career at the age of fourteen in nineteen ninety. Today, she is named the Empress of Pop because of her influence over Japan and Asia. And not just Japan, we're talking China, Singapore, Taiwan, Japan, and South Asia. Um, she is constantly changing her image. She does everything she can, like models, sings, acts, everything, are, and is constantly improving. She's the best solo singer in Japan's history. So I think that is interesting. I think that's amazing for her. Good for her. So we're going to take a look at a video, Ayumi Hamazaki's Evolution. Um, as my PowerPoint freezes. All right, let's just give this a second to load. This is not the whole video, but it's awesome. I grew up on this song.
So that was just to look at Yumi Hamazaki and her different types of music. So let's move on to J-pop around the world. Okay, so we can find J-pop in anime music, in commercials, in TV shows, in movies, and in video games. It's become extremely popular in the United States and around the world. Um, I read that it was popular, it became really popular in India, and so it's, that was just interesting to me, even considering um, J-pop music and Indian music, so different, but they love it. <laughs> so, for example, the Disney video game Kingdom of Hearts, a Japanese singer, Hikaru Utada, does the theme song. And we also can find a TV show called Hi Hi Puffy Ami Yumi, that started in 2004 and was aired on Cartoon Network for many seasons. So we're going to take a look at Hi Hi Puppy Yumi Yumi's theme song. It's awesome. Let's just give that a second to hopefully load. And um, we might have to move on. This is just the last part of my presentation. So that gives us a look at Hi Hi Puppy on Yumi and um, how it is popular in the United States and I think that's awesome um, that they're making their way in Japan's influencing the United States as well. Um, so I have my sources here. So we talked about the different um, types of music in Japan, the J-pop and where it came from. Um, some artists, Japanese artists, J-pop artists, and um, the instruments that were included, and we gave some examples. So, thank you so much, and I hope you guys learned enough about J-pop.